How's it going everyone? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and go into a deep dive look of what's coming to the Apple TV on Apple TV OS 26. So as always, timestamps to everything will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's start off with compatible devices. If you have a 2015 Apple TV or newer, your device will be compatible. However, there are some limitations because it's only the 4K version Apple TV that'll take full advantage of the new liquid glass tiles, which I'll elaborate more in a little bit. Then, as time making this video, we currently are on the developer beta, which is available right now through developer beta accounts. But if you'd like to get your hands on the public beta, that'll be available sometime in July, but will be released for everybody else around the full time period. So after updating this firmware update, you'll be prompted with your profiles, which will automatically pop up, especially if your household all share like an Apple TV account. From here, just select your profile and sign in. But if you wish to skip this, on the very bottom, you have this section over here, which allows you to go back to default automatic sign in, and then you just have to manually switch your account by just activating Control Center. Now the beauty about that profile login is all the apps, all the most used apps you're using or your toolbar or how you have your apps rearranged are automatically gonna be placed where you last left it. So everybody's account is gonna be separate on what they like doing the most on their Apple TV. In addition to that, API support will now be supported in the near future. Not sure if it's gonna be this beta or the next betas, but pretty soon you'll be able to just sign into your profile and no longer need a hassle with any login information across all your other apps. It'll automatically log you in while you having to re-enter your passwords and stuff. Now on the homepage, if you look at the little toolbar over here, it features that liquid glass design that Apple was talking about, which will only be supported on Apple TV 4 case. But on the bottom here, we will discover we did receive one new app. Because alongside with these like default first party Apple apps, as an example, like the arcade, the Apple music icon, the podcast, it does have that glass effect, especially on the photo apps as well as the app store. But the new Sing app basically would just launch the Sing app category on your Apple music because if we double tap the TV icon, it did default open up the native Apple music app right here. So I guess it's just a quick shortcut, but from here it will highlight all the new compatible sing songs because now you can utilize your iPhone microphone as the microphone for karaoke. So if we go in one of these songs categories, we hit start singing, QR code will pop up, but not only that, on your iPhone on the top portion of your screen, I'll probably have a screenshot on the side over here, devices hooked up to the same Wi-Fi network as your Apple TV can just tap on the banner and tap accept and just like FaceTime calling, your screen will switch to this page on your iPhone, which will basically give you microphone connectivity. And you basically will just start singing on your iPhone. And the lyrics will then move to the vocals of your voice. It works really well, surprisingly. And you have three vocal settings, as well as mic reverse. And from here, you also have control to pause and play the media off your iPhone, as well as add more songs. And from here, you can also disable the microphone as well if you just want to sing out loud with a group of people, you know, as well as emojis to react in real time. And of course, you have volume control options right here as well on the side of your screen. Now, you don't have to use the sing category because some of your existing songs you already have on your on Apple Music as a playlist, as an example. When you hit play, because if you look on the very bottom, you have the ability to start karaoke on some of your existing songs. And then since we're in the bottom over here, you'll also notice that it also has like the updated glass design as well for your info, as well as share play if you like to let others be the DJ for your house party. And of course you can add additional microphones as well. So that's a quick overview on how that sing karaoke feature works on the Apple TV now. And then pretty soon we'll also have the ability to use translations on foreign songs as well. If you have lyrics right in the background, Apple Music can translate the languages as well. Now, if we go into the Apple TV category as an example, and let's just select something like hit resume. I'm not gonna play the entire video, but what I am gonna do is, but also I'd just like to go over the new UI changes that Apple actually changed here. Again, it features that liquid, liquid glass, but on the insights, it also has been slightly redesigned where it's less distracting if you're watching like something on television. So if we scheme forward a little bit, and we go down, 
you'll see like the new design of the UI has been slightly retweaked. In addition to that, if you activate Control Center, it also has a cleaner fade effect as well. And then while browsing the Apple TV Plus, the movie categories as well as shows now feature a poster art for more of a cinematic viewing experience. Now real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, if you could take two seconds to kindly hit that like button and like, that would be truly appreciated as that allows the channel to be continued to be powered by you guys, the viewers, not integrated brands from like third parties trying to sell you subscriptions and stuff like that. So big thank you to those that continue supporting the channel just by simply hitting a like button and like. Those really do help out the channel a lot. So big thank you for doing that. Let's carry on. Getting out of here and going back to the main page of our Apple TV, another new change can be located in the App Store. In the App Store, it actually now features more information. So if you click on one of these apps as an example, let's see if we can find something here. Let's click on YouTube Kids. If you scroll down, you can see additional information now like developer privacy settings. But if you keep going down, you have more information than ever before. So basically they gave us more tools so we can learn more about certain things on sellers and stuff like that, which kind of features, has like a web browser design look, which is something we don't have yet. An actual web browser for already Apple TV. Now in the settings tab, if you go in screensavers, unfortunately Apple didn't really add anything during this beta, but what they did add is that they didn't mention during the keynote for WWDC is if you select aerials in the screensaver preference, you can choose preference by selecting choose aerials. Now you have finally have previews on how each screensaver will look like. I just gotta let it load. So for some reason it's not working on me, but right here we we're supposed to have like a preview on each aerial screensaver and how it looks like. And from here you can decide on which one you want to hide, which one you actually want to show. And it goes from earth to landscape as well as the underwater ones. Now, if you're somebody who uses like home pods or other airplay supported speakers to play audio through your Apple TV, you can now select it as a default audio source instead of having to manually do it each and every time, like on Control Center, how typically we had to do it and just manually select it here. Now, if we actually hop back into our settings and you go into video and audio, in the audio output, you can now select share airplay and then select the speaker. And then now it's checkmarked right here as the default speaker source. So now you have that freedom to finally do that. And now you can find a build number by just simply also just selecting check software update and it will give you the build number of your Apple TV now. And then lastly, if you're somebody who uses FaceTime calling on your Apple TV, it will now soon support live translations with captions. So if you're talking to somebody in Mandarin, as an example, it will automatically translate in real time, all automatically for you. Additionally, uh, as an added bonus, I nearly forgot to mention this, uh, the volume slider on the side of your Apple TV also features that liquid glass transparent effect as well. But other than that, there you guys have it. Those are all the new changes that's coming out to the Apple TV on tvOS 26. Let me know in the comment section which one of these was your personal favorite, as well as feel free to comment down below if you have a request to see of a new feature get added on the Apple TV. My request would be live activity, like widgets and stuff like that. I think that'll be very useful on the Apple TV as well, not just for CarPlay. And again, maybe a web browser would be nice too especially when it's paired to a wireless keyboard or you're using your phone's keyboard as well. There's some ideas right there, Apple. Anyways, if you wish to watch more, maybe you missed my CarPlay video of everything new on CarPlay for iOS 26. I cover that in greater detail in that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.